Diaxis is a Rust UI crate that takes heavy inspiration from React-style interfaces. It builds on similar technologies to Tori, but tries to be an all-in-one stop rather than a series of composable crates. With Dioxys, you can target the web, desktop, mobile, and text-based user interfaces. This is the Dioxys 0.4 update. In 0.4, Dioxys gets server functions. Server functions in general are sugar syntax over defining and calling HTTP APIs that are local to your application. They're not meant for defining APIs for other clients so much as intended to make it easier and faster to build out functionality that requires code to run on the server instead of the client. In practice, this seems like a similar function signature to what other projects like Leptos are landing on, a server macro with a result response and a function body that runs on the server. In fact, it's so similar that I had to look into it and both projects use the same shared server functions crate, which is awesome to see. When you create a server function, server-side builds of your application get a route function generated, while client-side builds get the fetch call to make the HTTP request to that server route that got generated. Any arguments passed to or from this function need to be serializable with something like Serde. One bonus of Dioxys' implementation here is the easy integration with Tower middleware via a middleware macro. I really appreciate the way Axum and other frameworks integrate with the Tokyo and Tower ecosystems in a similar way and hope more projects continue to build extensively on this ecosystem. Suspense is quickly becoming a shorthand word for the ability to wait for data or render a fallback. And in 0.4, Dioxys gets its own version of Suspense. Dioxys' implementation is interesting since it's not a component, but rather a return value. Calling Suspend on a scope marks the current component as suspended and lets you early return rather than rendering out the whole component, which needs the data you're waiting for. Combining suspense with the new use server future hook enables persisting the data fetched on the server and reaccessing it for hydration on the client later. If you're familiar with other suspense implementations, either in Leptos or other frameworks, you can note that the major difference between Dioxys' implementation and the others is the current lack of fallback loading states, as well as error boundaries. These features are used for showing loading states in the client if the data hasn't been loaded yet and handling component errors while rendering. Dioxys' old router was based on one of the versions of React Router. Unfortunately, React Router broke its API many times, so it's hard to say which one was the inspiration here. As of 0.4, Dioxys implemented a new router based on Rust enums. And I actually really like this approach. Routes are attribute macros on enum variants and have a little bit of magic sauce that tries to render a component of the same name in the current scope. This behavior is configurable, but likely a good default for most routes. The new router also combines well with layouts, which allow you to specify a wrapper component for a route. This is commonly used to implement features like headers, navigation, and more. Dioxys' implementation has you specifying the layout attribute helper macro and using the outlet name for dynamic content. This outlet name has been used in other UI frameworks before, so it's not something new that Dioxys made up. It's something they're reusing from the vocabulary in the existing ecosystem. Mobile rendering is one of the least supported targets for Dioxys at the moment, and your options are basically use a web view or experimentally try to render with WGPU. And there are a number of trade-offs if you do choose a web view. I have a hard time thinking that rendering web views is going to be the dominant mobile app strategy, given my previous experience with PhoneGap and other approaches, so it's heartening to at least see WGPU as an option. However, Tori is also exploring this rendering strategy, so I'm reserving my judgment until these approaches are deemed production ready, and this still may turn out to be a fine approach for internal, non-consumer facing CRUD apps. A couple of quick notes to round out the update. Eval is one of the ways you can sort of bail out from Dioxys' context and run arbitrary JavaScript if you need to. And now you can listen to events like Intersection Observer that Dioxys doesn't currently support. The Dioxys CLI is now called DX, which they're saying emphasizes the developer experience of Dioxys, but honestly, I'm just on the side of it's faster to type. The other interesting reasoning for this is that it might be reused in other projects. So I guess we'll have to see if that happens. Hot reloading now works in desktop applications, which is really nice because that's something we're accustomed to having on the web. And Dioxys in 0.4 now has a bundle command. They integrate Cargo Bundle for this, and it supports using similar configuration options as a Tori app would to enable bundling your app for Mac, iOS, Windows, and Linux. And finally, similar to Cargo Check, the Dioxys CLI now includes DX Check to type check without building your application. So with 0.4, the docs got an update, and Rust UI took another step forward. Go check it out, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great rest of your day.